Hey, Joel Woods here. I thought it'd be a good idea to shoot a little video um, just to maybe answer some more questions you have, uh, kind of go over the reasons why we're doing this program, how it's going to work, um, and uh, some more details. So first of all, I appreciate your interest. It's been exciting to see how many people are interested in this idea, and it's not just me. Um, and also, I've never done a YouTube video before, so this is kind of feels kind of weird, so I apologize if I'm not super polished at this, but uh, I'm going to try my best here. I also want to thank uh, some of the dads who've been helping out with this this concept: uh, Tony Vila, Joe DiGeronimo, uh, Adam Becklem, Jackson Junker, uh, to name a few. Along with Coach Adams and Coach Wadawick, um, it's been a group effort so far, and we're excited to see what's next. Um, I think trust is a big deal, and I'm sure you're, you're you're looking at me to you know ensure a safe and positive experience for the kids with tackle football and travel football. So. So that would be a good idea to know a little bit more about me, why I'm doing this, and the guys who are doing this, and uh, why we think it's a good idea. So first of all, I've lived in Independence for the last 10 years. I have five kids, uh, one boy and four girls. Um, I also coached high school football for 10 years. So I've coached at Avon, uh, Kaga Heights, um, Westlake, Vermilion, and actually Independence back in 2013. Um, I have also been involved with a youth program here for the past four seasons, a kindergarten, second grade, Saturday morning program, and have helped out a little bit with uh, flag football coaching as well on my brother-in-law's team. Um, I also am a fitness professional. I actually own and run a CrossFit gym in town, CrossFit Independence, um, for five years. And we also had a, a great uh, kids program there too. So I'm also certified in, in CrossFit kids and have like, some experience uh, really coaching kids um, in various ways and been trained to know how to do that. And uh, personally, I'm just very passionate about football, I'm passionate about uh, health and fitness, lifelong health and fitness, and um, guiding kids. You know, it's been something that's been in my DNA since I, DNA since I can remember. And uh, I'm really excited about this platform here to, to do all those things. I also uh, had a great experience growing up uh, in Westlake and Avon. In Westlake, when I was a kid there, we had a great uh football program. So I played third and fourth grade flag and fifth and sixth grade tackle there at Westlake. Had a great time. I and mean, looking back in my youth, probably some of my greatest memories was, was playing football with my buddies and their relationships and friendships we had. And uh, just great, you know, and being around great coaches that molded you and uh, super positive experience that I had where I grew up. Um, but that said, I also believe that you know football, it's, it's great for kids. There's a lot of good in football. There's a lot of beauty to it. Um, I know there's risk with any physical activity, any sport, and that's something we're all worried about. I'm worried about it too with you know, a son in the program. Um, you know, so I get it. You know, safety is definitely top of mind for me and everybody involved for sure. Uh, I know personally if, if my kid gets hurt, you know, my life at home is not going to be fun. So I'm going to do everything. Uh, that we can to make it the safest experience possible. I'll get more into safety a little bit later. Um, personally, I believe football is the greatest team sport. Um, had a lot of experience personally as a player and coach. Um, it teaches a lot of, about character and building young men, up, young men up. I think it's unmatched in those regards. You know, having strong male role models as coaches. Um, I think it's great at building this long-term, deep relationships with people and, and, and friends, and I've seen that. Uh, and face it, you know, right now it's tough to be a kid. I am glad I'm not growing up now. I'm glad I grew up in the 80s and 90s. Um, and I think our kids now more than ever need good athletic experiences, need um, positive coaches and, and, and building character. You know, they need it. So hopefully we're going to, we're going to, we will do that. <laughs> we're going to get this going and we're going to do that here in Independence. Um, I know um, when my kid now, he's going to be in third grade and approaching uh, this flag and took uh, tackle football thing. Um, I wanted to make sure, sure that my kid, um, that we can make a difference here. Um, I have some friends uh, in other cities that have travel football, tackle football, and they love it. You know, it's going really, really well for them in those communities. And um, I just saw a place where we can, we can bring that here to have a positive thing. Um, I've also followed just a few um, Facebook groups that have youth football, local teams, and I saw them do some great, awesome things that were really positive. And uh, I just thought, hey, let's, let's get that going here. Um, back in January, I had this idea kind of for this for, you know, they had a basketball camp for first and second graders they had a son and daughter in that program. And I thought it was nice, you know, it was like four Saturdays and the varsity coaches and the varsity players were kind of coaching the kids. And I thought to myself, well, why don't we have something like that for football? So I reached out to Coach Adams 
of I, who I've known and I said, hey, let's, I want to help you get, get something like this going. Let's maybe look at a camp. And that's kind of how it all started. Um, I sat down with Coach Wadawick and Coach Adams and we had some ideas for how to run a camp. And um, that's kind of how this, this, we got the ball rolling and they loved it. They said, hey, we see a need for this, let's do it. Um, then we invited some local dads in for a meeting and we just got to talking and there was some buy-in. And uh, I came up a little bit about, you know, tackle football. We used to have a strong CYO program and that's gone. So um, I went back and I did, I love doing research. If anybody knows me, I love doing the homework on this stuff. So I just went back and looked at, um, number one, just the different programs in the area. I looked at 12 different programs, and I want to see how they ran their camps just to kind of pull some best practices. And the more I researched them, the more I researched and saw how they all offer some kind of travel or tackle football program. majority of them had their own organization because it is kind of a big uh, a monster and um, to, to run. There's a lot of moving parts to a good youth football program. So they had their own organizations to support that with boards and coaches and coach development all that kind of stuff so at the same time I had a my son wrestling in the wrestling program here in Independence and it was great you know that was a travel experience man we're going out to Perry, Menor, Ashtabula so I thought to myself at the same time man I'm sure there's parents here in Independence that would support travel football I don't think we're going to be driving that far I mean some of those drives were long but it's worth it you know you love your kids and it's positive you're going you're to make those sacrifices so I figured why not I also really liked how the uh, program for wrestling was integrated with the high school program and they're kind of like hand in hand and that's kind of what I would, would want to see as a parent for football some kind of option uh, where it's integrated into the high school program so I uh, tried to um, be so, um, proactive and build in a bridge to do that um, so again I did look at uh, 12 other communities uh, I looked at the best ones I saw um, to me were Avon and a uh, Amherst they had great programs and I liked what they were doing so I reached out and I contacted people on their boards or presidents and I interviewed them and tried to say hey what are you doing right how do we do it how do we get this set up and I got some really good feedback um, I'm a big believer in really trying to find best practices and find mentors who can help you do that so we got some programs to model off of um, which I think are really helpful and the one thing that really stuck out as I did research was this organization called USA Football, which I never really heard of before, but it's a national organization that's awesome, guys. It's great. So impressed. You know, coaching varsity football for 10 years, like, man, they were, they got it going on. They know what they're doing. They got a whole team of medical professionals and coaches who've developed basically a new model of youth football, which I didn't know about, right? So there's kind of the old model, which probably we're used to, or we played, or had brothers, or family members that played kind of the old school youth tackle football and you know it's kind of like the model t versus a new mustang you know it's just not the same thing you know it's, it's apples and oranges so um part of this thing is trying to get you guys to um get up to speed on on this new model three usa football and all the great things they're doing and uh part of the model is hey we gotta give kids options you know, it, it, wreck versus travel, flag versus tackle, these different bridge games where you're bridging from flag to tackle with, with rookie padded flag, what's called rookie tackle, which is a modified version of tackle and having kind of steps, you know, a lot like other sports do. I mean, look at baseball, you know, from t-ball for two years, coach pitch, kids are developing, they're developing the skills, they're getting older, and then there's another step for two years, and you have kid pitch and a smaller little league field, right? And then Two years of that, kids get a little bigger and stronger now. Maybe they're in a little bit bigger field. It's still a kid pitch, but the field keeps getting bigger, and they can handle more uh, things, you know. And at some point, some kids go competitive and, and get into it more, and some kids just stick with their recreation. That's fine. And the whole thing here is really um, man, lifelong health and fitness and, and total person development, and, and, and that's really what it's all about. Uh, the other thing I like is USA Football has a coach certification. So I think sometimes these um, things, if, if, if there's no central organization, it's hard to get everybody uh, kind of doing the, the right things. Um, so there's a five-hour coach certification that covers safety and tackling and all sorts of stuff, age-appropriate skill development uh, that's really impressive that uh, we're going to be utilizing, at, I think is really the key, is having great parents who, who just want to do the right things for the right reasons. They want to get involved, and they might not know football. Maybe they do, but... We'll have the tools um, with USA Football to get them up to speed, and we're going to have the mentorship of um, the Independence coaching staff too. So they're going to be kind of guiding us along with, along the way as well. 
Uh, within that, they also uh, they have a, a contact certification uh, that's part of it, and uh, that's, that's awesome. So they have five levels of contact. It's all about, in practice, having predictable contact. And you're going from slower speeds to faster feet, speeds. One, one level is called the thud level, where you go at 50%, you make a thud, and then you stop. You know, in other drills, you, you continue through a couple steps, and it's a nice progression where, just like, again, like baseball, you know, kids start throwing pitching faster and faster and then curves balls start coming in and you kind of progress as times go on with different drills to handle that so kind of the same concept uh usa football also has six pillars which i think are great um that uh again we'll be kind of using too and the first thing is whole person in multi-sport development right the whole person it's character it's attitude it's respect for others um, all those things that are important um, and then kids being multi-sport, you want kids playing as many sports as possible, many physical activities as they can. Um, the second pillar is physical literacy and skill development. So kind of going from a general, just, you know, general athletic and fitness skills, uh, and then progressing to specific football skills. Um, uh, third pillar is coach education and training, which we kind of covered. Uh, the fourth is multiple pathways and entry points. So again, having different paths where kids can go um, and, and entering the game at different levels. You know, some kids might be ready for this padded flag in third and fourth grade, some kids might not be, so that's that's fine. We just wanna offer as many options and, and paths as we can. Um, pillar five is it's fun and fulfilling. Hey, this has to be fun. It's gotta be a lot of fun and it's gotta be fulfilling and that's gonna happen for sure. Um, number six is participation and retention. Hopefully it's a program where just we get people participating, you know, and, and kids want to do it. They're engaged. They, they're, um, they're excited about football. Um, they're excited about playing this program. And they want to keep doing it year to year because it's fun and, you know, it works. Um, and with participation, it's also, it's important to me that like, every kid gets meaningful participation. I've seen some things where, you know, some kids sit on the sideline most of the game, you know, or they're maybe touch the ball once or twice the whole year where this is going to be the opposite, you know, and, and I got that from the Avon model and Avon um, division two football powerhouse. I mean, they're a top five in the AP poll year after year, going to regional final state championship games. Uh, so they're a very competitive high school football program. And their head coach said, listen, that their youth football program, it's all about participation. They want kids playing and just getting meaningful snaps. You know, you never know which kid, anyway is going to turn out to, to be really really good in high school who just was kind of maybe mediocre in fourth or fifth grade so um we just got to make it fun for kids um it, it's really nice how this USC football kind of leads into that um it's not just us making up rules but these leagues will be a part of they have the same rules as well so so we started looking at putting a, a whole program together again our, our mission uh they came up with is one long-term health and fitness uh, using football as a platform for that and teaching that and teaching health guidelines and nutrition and rest and we're gonna be teaching all that stuff um, There's a lot of problems, you know with diabetes and, and, and lots of health related problems that we're having so uh, Really that you want to use football as a vehicle for physical activity again total person development is number two and the last thing That's part of our mission statement is preparing kids for excellence You know on and off the field preparing them uh, for high school middle school sports not just football but any sport so um that's important too and we have a whole bunch of objectives which we covered in one of those uh documents we sent you um some of those objectives are to get to be integrated with the high school program you know we're going to be the junior blue devils we're all about blue, independence being blue devils having kind of a, a, a common culture if you will from you know this third grade to 12th grade you know a core values that the kids here year after year and having Coach Adams kind of disseminate what, you know, what are the appropriate things he wants kids to learn at these levels. You know, don't need to learn it all, but let's, let's hit the things together, our whole coaching staff, making sure all the kids are getting, whether it's, you know, respect for yourself, respecting coaches, you know, listening, uh, those kind of things, having integrity. When you go to an away game, we're going to leave the field better than when we got there. All those kind of culture, character points are really the most important thing. Um, the strategy part of plays, that's not as important. Listen, we're going to keep things simple. Um, hopefully we can use maybe use some of the same terminology or the cadence as the high school, but that, that's not really as important at this point. Um, we will have, you know, plays and all that that are really age appropriate and uh, things that can build, build scale and build confidence year after year. So um, that's what we mean by that. 
Um, it's also important to me that this program with that, that we need to sing the same song. As a program, as a coaching staff, the high school, everybody, the stakeholders, the parents were involved. If we all sing the same song in terms of these core values and this culture and this mission, we're going to make music. Right? If we're all singing a different song or one coach wants to do a thing a different way and the high school does a different way and this parent saying something else at home, you know, like, you know, all those different things that they make a noise. So we want to make something good and beautiful with this program and, and, and that's a big part of it. So then I started to look at different leagues to join. There's some different leagues I was looking at and then, um, you know, we, we um, happened to, when we were looking at leagues, get an email, me and Coach Adams at the CVC or high school league is uh, decided to create a youth football league. We couldn't believe it. We really couldn't believe it. That it's kind of landed in our lap here. We got an email that they were thinking about it and um, pretty cool. So we were interested. And then uh, I went on vacation right after that, February 29th. I got back March 10th and everything was, you know, a couple days later kind of shut down and really stalled our process for getting us going. So um, trying to make the best out of it. You know, I feel like it's kind of a worst case scenario, trying to start this program up. Um, with the situation we had and uncertainty and you know, we weren't sure if we we're going to have a football season or baseball season but um, and certainly this in, anything in June to get the information out in June is, is not ideal again we would have you know hopefully best case scenario started this long time ago but we just got the ideas in January February March and uh, you know, brainstorming doing a lot of research to make sure we do it right which is important so this is what we got you know let's make Lemonade out of lemons, guys. You know, I know we can do that in independence. We've got the families that, that care um, and that I think can understand the situation and are willing to do, do um, whatever it takes to make it work. Um, so let's address safety next. Obviously, head injuries is a hot topic. It's important. Uh, it's an important topic that we need to cover and research and, and separate myth from fact. And I think that's part of the problem out there. That's uh, it gives parents uncertainty of, you know, they hear different things or it's movies or, th you know, what, you know, they had an experience of their brother who got hurt in youth football and, you know, what are the facts? So um, I think it's important that we make informed decisions based on facts uh, for kids to play any sport. Um, again, there's risk, there's risk involved in every sport. So uh, there's some experts who are going to help us. So the Browns, again, are having a parent meeting June 23rd at 6 o'clock. It'll, it'll be a virtual meeting. I'll send that link out uh, when we get it. Um, and they're going to have two doctors from UH who will be going over that stuff and a nutritionist. And it's, it's going to be awesome. I mean, the Browns are going to support our league, so that, that's pretty cool. Also, um, we're going to have a victory camp, our youth summer camp. And the last day on July 30th, Coach Adams has a, a doctor he knows that believes he's a neurosurgeon or some kind of brain doctor. And he's going to come in and uh, to the parents and, and, and give the facts as well. So um, they're kind of independent third-party people that – Nice to have that information that's just coming from us. Uh, also, USA Football has a lot of information on their website for that stuff. And also, there's a book called uh, Brainwash by Merrill Hodge, who is a football player for the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Chicago Bears. He's got a great book with lots of information. It's co-written by Peter Cummings, MD, who is a board-certified board certified forensic neuropathologist. And his son plays youth football. And um, Great information here. I've read the whole thing. Highlighted it. I got some quotes in there uh, in the um, document I sent yesterday. Um, and some other things, too. Um, the statistics, and there's tons of statistics, and I can go over all of them now, but some key ones. And, but one thing that always comes up, you know, is youth flag football safer than tackle football? Um, and, you know, is that true? So there was a study in Iowa that um, studied this uh, question, and it turned out flag football had more injuries than, than youth tackle football. And the head injuries, the ones we worry about, were exactly the same, right? So um, kids playing flag football, they're running around without equipment on. Guess there, there's contact in flag football, if you've ever seen it before. So uh, I think having uh, equipment on is a bonus, uh, but there is no research. If you see it, let me know. I'm always looking for articles and research. If you find something that says, there's a study that says youth tackle football is more dangerous for head injuries than flag football, it, I hadn't seen it. Um, Another topic that comes up is, you know, is it better to wait till middle school to have your kids play tackle football? Um, my bias is no, it's not. Um, it depends if it's done the right way or not, right? So it all kind of depends. The old school model versus the new school model is completely different. Um, I, I think what you want to think about is, is learning a skill and getting comfortable with a skill and being confident in that skill uh, so you're ready for it when you need it. So if you wait till seventh or eighth grade, 
guess what? Those kids, you're learn, now learning the skill, are bigger and faster and stronger than they were in third and fourth to sixth grade. So it's harder to learn that and have the confidence, to me, um, if the alternative is to learn it younger in safe, uh, controlled environments and practice and, and, and games that are set up to be safer, which we'll kind of go over too. Um, to me, that's the way I would choose for my kids, and you got to make your own decision. But um, I think it's the safest way to do it, it to progressively learn the skills. But the kids are ready for it. Uh, I can think of baseball. I think if you only did T-ball or coach pitch all the way to seventh grade, and now kids are throwing 70 miles per hour and curve balls and sliders in seventh grade, and they're just used to coach pitch and T-ball. Right? It'd be very difficult to have confidence and to do well and, and, and hold your own unless you kind of had that progressive thing where kids are pitching and, and then the kids get stronger and faster and throw it harder. So um, that's, uh, I think, one way to look at it. Uh, it's just statistics in 2012 uh, about concussions, and this is for kids 18 and under, um, but there's a zero, according to the study, there's a 0 0.5 chance out of 1,000 that a kid would get a concussion in football. Um, so that's one out of every 200. Um, again, that's 18 and under. So I would love to see it for 14 and under or 12 and under. So those kids 14 to 18 are bigger, stronger, faster. So uh, I believe um, they'd be different for younger kids our age. Uh, in 2009, um, and that's an old one, but um, and this is before the modifications have happened, um, USA football. This is for hospitalized head injuries for kids 14 and under. Now, the number one activity... Uh, that had these head injuries was bicycling, 85,000. Um, football was number two at 46,000, um, so about half as much as cycling. Uh, baseball and softball was 38,000, so 8,000 less, so not a huge drop-off. I was really surprised by that, and basketball had 34,000. Um, so there's some stats. I'm sure it's different now. Um, with the cycling, right, bicycling, we love it, awesome. You know, so that's, there's a lot of good and beauty in bicycling. And I got kids right now that just starting to learn, girls learning to ride their bikes. And the last two weeks have been all over the place and they just want to ride their bikes. And um, half the time they're not wearing their shoes and I got to yell at them to get their shoes and reinforce that. And their big brother loves to go on the towpath and do some long bike rides. There's good, good family time, you know. They're having fun, they're getting exercise, they're doing it together. It's a lot of good and beauty with riding your bike. Um, but there's a lot of danger, 85,000 instance of head injuries now with that they said that only 50 percent of kids um 14 and under had had helmets and 25 percent used them so i mean there's a big problem so if you look at it if you have kids riding bikes there's things you want to put in place right you, you want to have a safety town right you want them to learn about safety and bike safety and, and from other people from professionals and you want them to be supported by the parents and your neighbors that to, you know, ride your bike with their shoes on and your helmet on and, and look both ways. And there's procedural things that we can do to limit the risk of this good activity. Um, speaking of which, my neighbor across the street, Miss Judy, is awesome. I mean, she's on top of it if my kid doesn't wear their, their helmet. So um, that's kind of how it works. You know, we got to do it together. Um, so we're looking at our organization, Independence Youth Football, is really to be the safety town for youth tackle football here. Let's have a whole process where we teach kids the right way, the reasons why um, enforce good behaviors for safety and have protocols in place, place and uh, have a community who's singing the same song that makes it as safe as possible. Good thing as safe, safe as possible. Also, uh, in March, there's an article in USA, Football, USA Today, I believe, that did say that there are some statistics that said uh, youth contact injuries, uh, sport injuries are leveling off. Um, which is awesome. And then their hypothesis in this article is because these new modifications, not just in football, but a lot of sports. Um, also, too, any of these statistics I'm bringing up, if you want to have them, I'll send them to you, right? I'm just making this up. So, uh, Also, in USA Football reported that 85% of parents say that youth football, tackle football, is safer than it was five years ago. So it's going to have some guidelines that we're going to use uh, through USA Football to increase the safety as much as we can. I want to get the coach certification, the mentorship, um, practices are different, right? We're only going to practice two days a week. 39% of hit injuries happen to practice, so we can limit it that. Um, not going to practice as much. Kids don't need it yet, you know. Um, we don't want kids to burn out anyway. I think less is more in this regard. We would have a quality two days a week. I'll be three days a week before. We'll practice three days a week before the season starts. So when games start, it'll be two days a week in a game on the weekends. Um, and they're only limiting through a football contact no more than 30 minutes a week. 
Uh, and for the third and fourth grade, pad to flag level would be less than that. It would be like 15 minutes of some kind of contact drill or contact uh, when you're playing each other and screaming each other in team. Um, and there's uh, gameplay is different. Right? There's new modified games that are awesome, right? We're playing on smaller fields. Kids are in two-point stances. There's no blitzing. Um, when there's a turnover, the whistle blows. The kid, you know, it's, it's all about trying to get predictable, safe contact in these games and practices. Um, so, like, you know, again, a kid, there's a fumble, and a kid picks it up. There's not a kid blindsiding them. Uh, the whistle's blown dead, and the other team gets the ball back at the 40, kind of like backyard football. So um, we're also going to have an emergency action plan and a concussion protocol. Um, if there's any signs that a kid, and we'll go over the signs, you know, that, that we can do as, as coaches, uh, if there's any kind of sign or we're not sure there's a hard hit or something, a practice or a game, I mean, the kid's out of the game. He's out of the practice. Like, no questions. Um, we're going to err on the side of safety, like, for sure. Um, and then the kid will be out the all next week in the next game, if that's what happens. And we're going to have him see a doctor as soon as possible and get you know, confirmed one way or the other. So that's uh, – we're going to have protocols in place. Is that they are going to happen. Um, hopefully not much. And then the, the teams I talked to, Amherst and Avon, they said they really have not – and third and fourth grade padded flag and fifth and sixth grade really key tackle. They haven't seen much, you know, head injuries uh, anecdotally through them. Uh, so lastly, let's finish up with kind of how it works. Again, a lot of it was in the, those documents. Uh, again, the team options, third and fourth grade travel, regular flag football through the CBC League, right? Um, five on five. Um, and then we're going to have a not looking at the option of a third and fourth grade padded flip flag football which is super popular everybody I talk to loves it i mean kids just love putting the helmets and the shoulder pads on having the junior blue devils on the logo on the helmet and you know so there's a lot and they're getting bumping into each other in flag anyway so why not make it a little safer and have pads on them um but I, kids have fun you know so that's been a real big thing you know i talked to avon they have like 13 or 14 teams of third and fourth grade only they're a bigger school than us but um they've been doing it for a while and they love it um Again, it's all about participation. That level, third and fourth grade for both. Kids are rotating plays every position. Uh, we want a general broad exposure to football. Uh, learn all the positions. I want every kid being the quarterback, uh, being a running back, being line. Um, different positions on defense, right? Having fun, participation. It's not about being competitive yet. It's not about winning yet. Down the line, high school, it's a different story. Um, so everyone have significant participation. And the low numbers, right, seven on seven for rookie tackle, padded flag, uh, as part of, like, let's get kids more – they don't have to learn as many positions. easier for coaches, too. And uh, kids, man, get the football and, and have some fun with it. Um, high player-to-coach ratio is important for these leagues, too, right? Kids – you know, it's going to help coaches keep safer environments. Uh, more kids get attention. They can develop their skills better, have more fun. Um, we can have, hopefully, multiple teams per level. Um, and you never, again, never know who's going to bloom anyway later on. Uh, and hopefully this just keeps the kid interested year after year, you know, and they're developing their skills, they're getting better, building some confidence. Um, leagues, um, for the padded flag, right, we don't have a league yet. We're looking at, I had one I thought we were in this uh, Luke, Lake Area Youth Football League, and they weren't getting back to me. They finally got back to me and said you had to register for a team in the winter. And then I just found another league, uh, Avon, Avon Lake, Rocky River, that has teams um, that we're looking at getting into. So as long as we have 10 kids, which I think we will, um, we could have hopefully a team in that league, at least for this year. Then we'll see what happens after that, um, which is pretty cool. So hopefully in two weeks we'll go. I'll go to a meeting, submit our application. I'll we'll know that for sure. You know, so uh, it's a little bit up in the air. It's looking likely. Um, and I think each league is different. So I think this league might cap the team at 14. I don't think the CBC League is requiring caps on the teams. There's kind of a sweet spot of like, you know, 11 to 14 kids in a team. So there's enough kids um, and but not too many. So uh, I think this league might be different. So what we'll, we'll probably do is the first 14 kids that pay registration will be on that padded flag team unless we can get 20 and get two teams. Um, if that league doesn't end up working out, um, then we'll have to have the option of the regular flag uh, through the CBC League, which will still be good. But... Um, I know a lot of kids and parents are really excited about padded flag, and I am too. It's going to be sweet. Uh, fifth and sixth grade, rookie tackle, right, uh, is another bridge game. We're trying to bridge flag to uh, full on, full field, 11 on 11. Um, that's really fun. Uh, the difference is kids will have two main positions, you know, and do some more position sampling, but not as much. So 
Kids will have a, a primary line position, a primary skill position, running back, wide receiver, quarterback. Uh, and how it works in this level is kids rotate each quarter. We play line in the first quarter, second quarter, we're playing a skill position. And you rotate. And also you, the coaches meet together before the game and they decide, okay, let's have a big, big guys and little guys. So when our big kids are playing line, their big kids will play in line and, and vice versa for the, the, the smaller kids. Um, so things are fair. Um, again, there is contact. It's predictable contact. We're encouraging kids to stay on their feet. Again, there's lots of rules in place to make it as safe as possible. Um, some dates. Again, here, I know some confusion, but June 10th. We just need to know if you're interested, right? We want to get organized and have an expectation of who's interested, how, just how many numbers. Again, the Cleveland Browns are going to be helping out with the CVC League only uh, with some equipment. So, um, we need to give the Browns an estimated number uh, for the third and fourth grade regular flag and the fifth and sixth grade rookie tackle. Um, also, by then, it would be nice to know if, if you're interested in helping out with, as a coach or a board member. We are creating a, a, a nonprofit organization to support this. So we we'll need some board members if you want to get involved. Um, so that's interest only. You email me and let me know which program you're interested in. July 13th is registration. So that's when we're paying. We're going to have Rydell there to fit the equipment. Um, not sure about the location yet. You know, we're trying to get the Kiwanis Pavilion. That'd be a great place. Close to baseball fields. I know baseball season might pour after a game, um, but you can't you can't um, reserve those yet at this time. Uh, we're looking at maybe the Independence, you know, the high school, maybe right outside the locker room, set up some tables that are far apart and have different stations and things like that. So uh, we're looking into that. When we know, you'll know. Uh, also, with the registration, it's a hard cutoff. July 13th. You can't you can't take late registrations because we got to order equipment now. We got to order the pads and the uniforms and all that stuff um, at that time. Um, equipment. Uh, what we really thought with equipment, we think it's best for parents to buy their own equipment for their kids. It's like like now in little league, you have to have your own helmet and bat and glove. Um, I just think it's the best way to go right now. Uh, we don't have to worry about paying or finding a place to store all that equipment. Um, we feel like. Um, yeah, also, you can sell it when your kids graduate this program. They can sell it back to another uh, family that's coming into it. Or maybe you have multiple kids who can pass it down. Um, it's around $185 off the door or plus tax for all the gear. But we need to do that. Um, personally, like, I like to have my parents, my kids' grandparents, like pay for it for Christmas and birthdays. Is, I don't know about you guys. My kids have enough toys. We don't need more toys for grandparents. So I think there's a way to do that. We'll be looking at fundraisers in the future when we get more time to get organized and to help offset those costs. But that's what we're looking at. Again, the Browns are going to, I guess, get us helmets at least for fifth and sixth grade rookie tackle because we're so good through the CBC League. Shoulder pads are a maybe, so it might be able to help us out for that. Um also need things like you know integrated pads and pants um, that'll go with the uniforms for the padded flag and rookie tackle um, and we'll have ju a junior blue doubles uh, practice jerseys um, that the kids will get as well through through that as an additional cost to the registration again it's 150 for padded flag and rookie tackle at 75 for regular flag third and fourth um, we'll also be sending out a calendar for meetings for co coaches and board members. Also, coaches who are interested in, in helping out with our victory camp in uh, end of July. Um, our goal is to have coaches and high school coaches and uh, my parents kind of working together, you know, creating this kind of football family of parents, youth coaches, high school coaches, um, players, alumni. That's kind of our goal is to uh, use that as a vehicle to do that. Uh, again, Victory Camp is, um, you can sign it through the rec center, do that today. Um, it'll be July 28th or 30th. It's going to be awesome, guys. It's going to be a really, really fun camp. I think we're going to try to have, like, music DJ up in the booth and high energy, and uh, we're going to coach them really, really well. It's going to be really organized. Uh, it'll be like a, a cookout family night at the end. We're going to have speakers every day uh, to reinforce uh, culture and character. <clears throat> we're looking at... Um, Oh, also with the victory camp, I realize now baseball might run to the end of July. So we're thinking about possibly pivoting to maybe doing it in that first week of August, or maybe I may have to do it in the morning. The problem is with August is now the varsity sports are going to be using the varsity field. We want to have the camp at, so it'd be soccer, boys and girls, and high school football training that field. So it might be tougher. Or we might have to move to maybe the old middle school field or something different for the camp. You know, we'll do what we can. Um, but the hype, yeah. 
Um, other things uh, to wrap up, uh, looking for the overall program, we want to be really, really well run. Um, we want to be super positive for the kids and the, and the parents. Uh, we want to be a program that does the extra little things that go from good to great. We want this to be a great program. Um, things like having a nice website, social media, uh, Instagram. Uh, we want to make you know, hype videos and highlight videos that are really well produced. If you look at Amherst, they have the best, they do the best at that. Look at their YouTube page or their Facebook page. They got awesome, just fun hype videos that get you excited about football. Um, we want to have that nice end of the year banquet with awards and, and, and recognition. Um, we want to have um, some field trips, you know, with our teams. You know, we'd like to have uh, take our team to a championship game down in, in Canton. You know, for high school, let's go to the Division Seven. You know, game parents, pro, you know, maybe get pizza and drive there. Maybe go to the Hall of Fame or maybe go, you know, hike in the Metro Parks. We want to do the extra things to build that family and community. Um, and uh, hopefully give our kids an amazing fall, a great football season in this fall. You know, with everything going on, that's really our hope is give them something really positive that's just a lot of fun and a lot of good for them. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns, I'm happy to answer them. You know, send me a, a private message on Facebook. You can, uh, again, email me at independenceyouthfootball at gmail.com. I can set up a time to, to uh, do a phone call if you need to. Um, and to wrap up, uh, please pass this information along to anybody uh, you think might be interested, the Facebook group um, or just the, the um, documents or this video. Uh, and if you're interested in helping in any way, you know, let me know. You know, coaches, board members, if you want to help with social media and video. I know Amherst has like a video social media guy, which I'm not that great at that stuff, but I'm trying to do my best. But that would be great. There's lots of things I think we can do together, as, again, as an independent youth football family. Um, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for your interest. I'm excited. I think you're excited. I hear the kids are excited. Um, you know, let's make independence, you know, a great football community, a great football town. Um, I know we can do that. Um, and I hope you have a great day. And I'm sure I'll see you guys at the baseball field soon. Thanks so much. Take care.